Hey everyone, I am here today with my great friend, Keith Jennings, who is an inspiration and muse for me in so many different ways. And uh, before I introduce Keith and we get into this discussion, I want to give you some context. What is the genesis of our discussion today about how to learn how to learn? And there were two data points. First of all, I saw an article, I believe it was in the New York Times, that was documenting how people are so overwhelmed with information in this crisis that we're in, that they're having a hard time discerning what's important and what they need to sort of capture to become part of their life and become part of their narrative. Then Keith and I were having a friendly phone call not long ago. And as he is often known to do, he like inspires me and the fireworks and the neural connections start firing. And Keith was telling me about a process he has to internalize information. Now, let me give you an example of how this manifests itself in a normal conversation with Keith, right? So Keith was really kind. He was reviewing chapters of my Marking Rebellion book before they were published. Here was a typical comment from Keith. Oh, Mark, I like this part. It reminds me of a post that Theodore Lovett wrote for the Harvard Business Review in 1962. Where'd that come from? Today, we're gonna learn where that comes from. How does this guy become this like font of information and geniosity? So Keith, first of all, I mean, there might be some people who don't know you. You've been uh, a writer on my blog for about a year now. And, Indeed. and you're starting to really, you know, make a name for yourself on the speaker circuit as well. So just give people a little background about who you are and what you do. Hey, sure. I'm uh, essentially a social impact executive. So I serve a company uh, and, and uh, Atlanta, Georgia, called Jackson Healthcare, and I serve as Vice President of Community Impact. Uh, so a lot of my day today is focusing on how to uh, uh, educate and activate our 1,700-ish associates to uh, go beyond profit and tap into a greater purpose uh, beyond the day job. And uh, second part of that is I work with over 200 nonprofits, uh, mostly in Georgia, but but many uh, outside Georgia as well, and just trying to help them help bring lift uh, to their, their organization and the business they're serving. So that's it. And then my writing, uh, as you've seen, is really centered on um, uh, how, do, how do you see the familiar and unfamiliar ways? How do you get past biases and blind spots that we all have and uh, really ha try to get to breakthrough ideas and breakthrough thinkings and odd connections? So that's yeah, me. So I, and the I quick. think our discussion today is very consistent with that. It's sort of like, you know, what are the neural sort of yeah. frameworks that either unleash us or hold us back? So what happened in your life that, you know, give me like a before and after picture. What made you realize I need to change the way that I, that I internalize information and learn? Well, so I think this goes back to being a kid in a small North Georgia town. Uh, so you and I have parallel stories, uh, different regions, but parallel stories. You know, growing up in, in a town that uh, where I was a county kid, you know, and the cool kids were the city kids. And, <laughs> and so I, I honestly think there's, a, there's an inferiority complex that is the fuel behind a lot of this because, you know, you grow up and as you move around and you, you kind of, you know, you have a funny accent and you're made fun of, you, you start to feel like, and that, you know, you must be dumb because you use the way you talk. And I just think I, from as early age as I can remember, I just always felt uncomfortable in a room of people. I always felt like I was not the smartest person in the room, um, but I desperately wanted to be, uh, as smart or smarter than everybody in the room. So it just kind of created this 
engine in me that made me feel like I have to be prepared. Like I, it's my responsibility to prepare myself. And if I'm going into a meeting, I'm going to make sure I know what we're going to be talking about. But um, so that was kind of, I think that's the why. I think it's nothing elegant, but I, I truly think that's what stirred me early on. Yeah. And then I had a, an old boss. He's the guy that gave me my first job. When I left his company for my next, my first promotion, he gave me an audio. Remember audio cassettes? Remember cassettes? I uh, just... So 1993, he gives me Tom Peters, The Pursuit of Wow, audio cassette. And of course, I was a literature major. Uh, I love literature and poetry. And I didn't want to be a sellout business person. Uh, and so I just kind of was like, yeah, thanks. And that audio cassette sat in a, I don't even know where it sat in apartments over about three states. And I found myself in the mid nineties managing, I was, I was a, a sell, I was in sales and marketing. I was traveling three states by car. So I'd leave the house on Monday, come home on Friday and you're in hotel rooms. So yeah, I had a lot of time where I ran out of radio shows, <laughs> ran out of good music, and I thought, I'm just going to listen to that stupid Tom Peters audio cassette. <laughs> and I fell in love with it. Like, it was the first time I thought, if this is what business thinking and, and, and narrative can be about, like, give me more. Fast forward a few years, I found myself in a meeting, and I could quote entire paragraphs from that book because I had heard it so many times. And, and it was this aha moment because I remember, it's almost like you did. I, people are like, like how, did you, how are you remembering that? <laughs> and I thought, oh, okay. So I actually found that if I am driving or walking while, or I could even be doing the dishes, while listening to something, uh, the the key pieces of it imprint in my memory and um, that was the start of kind of i guess what's become kind of the process i have today and my, my process we'll talk about in a little bit it goes way beyond that now yeah, but uh, let's, let's, that's let's, how i learned yeah so let's move to that because so yeah so was there some tutor or mentor or article that you that you saw that said aha here's here is the process where to, to help me learn how to internalize mm -hmm. what I'm learning. So talk about that. Cause I mean, that's just a, amazing. It's, it was total dumb luck discovery. I, ha I didn't have anybody guide me in that. This was all pre-internet, you know, as I'm trying to figure this stuff out or it's, wow. it's early internet, right? We're talking CompuServe days. So um, <laughs> the, uh, so it, it really, a word we haven't heard in a while. <laughs> Remember Alta Vista and CompuServe. Yeah, uh, that was those days. But you know, it was it was just Geo Cities. Uh -huh. huh? Geo Cities was. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I think I intuitively, being a literature major, I intuitively I intuitively create narratives out of things. So I turn everything into to micro stories, and then those micro stories, as neuroscience is is proving, they imprint. They kind of stick in your brain. And when I see something that looks or sounds like that, these little narratives uh, just kind of pop out of my brain. Uh, and then the, the other part of that is, I, you know, if you would have asked me uh, what if I could do anything coming out of college, if money didn't matter, I would have wanted to be a poet. I mean, that's my that was my besides baseball. That was my love and passion. I loved poetry. And all poetry is, is juxtaposition. It's comparison. You're taking something and something else and, that don't seem to, to live together. And you're, you know, you're creating an aha moment by kind of connecting the two things together. So I think that a lot of, oddly, a lot of poetry reading I've done has created a way of seeing the world uh, to where when I see something, my brain kind of, you know, almost subconsciously finds odd connections out there. And then I just enjoy playing around with them and to see if there's something there. So, so the first step in your process, as you were telling me, is whenever you're doing your normal business reading mm -hmm. and you, you, you see something that you want to know, yeah. that you truly want to know. 
So is this just sort of just through inspiration or do you seek out these things that you need to know or want to know? I wouldn't say I'm an active, an active seeker. I have, I'm an obsessive curiosity. Like I just can't turn my brain off. So that's just the way I'm wired. That's it big, is. I'm. I'm. I've got a problem with that right now. I. Can't, <laughs> I can't even sleep at night. I really. I can't. I'm. I'm. I'm, cre I'm creating content in my brain as yes. I'm trying to sleep. It's just. Yes. Yes. I'm yes. a hyperactive, so, hyperactive creator. I'm an HC. Ooh, I like that. We should create a club. <laughs> so anyway. we need a. We've got a movement. Yes. So the. It's more about, a, it's a state of being open. Uh, it's, it's a pursuit of serendipity. Let's call it that. Yeah. I like to go through the day just completely excited about what might show up. And so uh, it's part of just who I am. Like I have just made, I made that decision consciously years and years ago. It felt like a much better way to spend the day than, you know, slugging through it. And uh, so I just, every conversation, every meeting, everything I read, everything I watch or listen to, I am just kind of waiting for something to surprise me. And as soon as I get that, you know, I get that emotion, like, that's it. Like, what's that? Yeah. Uh, that's when I go, I go deep. Okay. So now you found something that is exciting to you. Uh, it's, it's, it, it, you know, it's connecting some dots yep. uh, with you. And it's funny because I just uh, wrote an article about this. You know, last year I got to meet Walter Isaacson, the amazing yeah. historian and author. Yes. And, you know, we were talking about the nature of genius. And he said, I think genius is just, you know, constant curiosity and an ability to see patterns. And, you know, I, 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 I would never claim that for myself, but, you know, I, I am always constant, constantly curious mm -hmm. and investigative about a wide range of things. And I do seem to be able to connect the dots of different things in, in my life. It sounds like you do the same thing. Mm -hmm. So as you stumble upon these things and connect these dots, then how do you make this part of your being? Because I can't do it. I just, I have just a terrible memory. So I really need to know this process because, you know, I'll read a book and two years later, I can't even remember what was in the darn thing. So talk about this, this key idea now of internalizing these important lessons that you learn. Absolutely. So let's, um, let's take, let's just, let's be specific and tangible. So let's take, I read, you know, the, there's a, a, an author named James Clear, writes great articles, has a great blog. A few years ago, writes a, a blog post on first principles and, you know, cites Elon Musk as someone. But this is something that goes, <laughs> you know, this is something that existed before Musk was born. And, um, and I read it thinking, oh, my gosh, this is brilliant. You know, and he tells a story in it of, of you that's, got. That's the you, first sign. Yeah, oh codify. God, this is brilliant. Yeah, this is brilliant. Oh or, there, or it just may be there's yeah. something here. There's, there's something. Serendipity. And so the way I like to think about it is I, I have to codify it. So imagine getting a um, box of Legos. And, you know, a kid buys a box of Legos, and it's going to be Anakin's Starfighter from Star Wars, okay? Well, you can, you can that's, what the, that's what the child is buying. He's buying the Starfighters. But really, all it is is a bunch of pieces. And so I see the Starfighter Lego, uh, and in my mind, I take it a completely apart. So when you open that box and you've got all the colors kind of separated and the shapes into these, into these little individual packages, I do a reverse of that, which is essentially what First Principles is. I kind of take the idea, and I, and I, I start by going, what are the building blocks of this idea? Like, where, where did it come from? Who, where did it originate? What's the etymology if there's, a, if there's an old word involved? What's the etymology no, of that? So you, you don't take an idea on its surface? No. You research the idea. I assume it's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so almost in a Malcolm Gladwell revisionist way, I think something about this sounds true. Uh, and I'll bet you the opposite of it is probably just as true. 
So let's, let's play with it. Like, almost like it is truly almost like mental Legos. I like, I want to take it apart. I want to look at it from all angles. So once I kind of find that, I will watch, I start with um, YouTube videos and podcasts. And I will, I will search, you know, iTunes and I will search YouTube for that phrase or whatever that thing is. Or if it was an author that said it, I want to hear interviews with that author name with that topic. Yeah. And I watch and I watch every single YouTube video I can find. And I listen to every single podcast I can find until I start to feel like I'm hearing the same thing over and over. And I could recite it. To, I could teach it to someone at this wow. point. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And then I read the book. And then I go and read academic, I, I try to go more deep dive, I read articles on it. Yeah, so that's, you know, it's interesting, the kind of an analogy that I'm thinking of here, Keith, it just popped into my mind, is it's almost like someone who loves sports. So if you have a favorite sports team or a favorite athlete, you'll go and do a deep dive on that team. You'll know the history, the records, the stats, and you'll be able to have a conversation really forever about that mm -hmm. thing that you have done the deep dive on. Right. So it's really quite fascinating to think, well, look, if you find a significant new idea in your life, then you go do a deep dive on that. And mm -hmm. by playing around with it, you can't help but remember it. I mean, That's it. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're just like creating. It locks it. That's right. It locks it. It creates this space in your mind that's never going to go away. That's right. You, you've, dev you've devoted a significant amount of bandwidth to it. That's it. And it's no more than a week. I, I mean, it yeah. rarely, unless I go into books, uh, I rarely go more than a week on a topic to really feel like I can understand it. Yeah. So, I mean, I think some people watching us today or listening to us might be thinking, well, what kind of a job does this guy have where he could spend a week? <laughs> <laughs> I have a full-time job and four kids. Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> so, I mean, talk a little bit about, put this in context. So let's say, I mean, it, how do you make this sort of a process in your life? Obviously, you can't be doing this every single day or every single week, but no, I mean, right. how, how do you sort of you know, codify the code how do you yep. work this into a into into your life yeah it's a, a drive time so driving yeah. to and from the office or going yeah. to pick up kids sitting when I'm, I'm by myself waiting for a kid at karate or gymnastics yeah. um, so it's just those little micro moments you may have 10 minutes you may get five yeah. um it's i just kind of do that i you know i love doing the dishes so, you know, that's kind of, I have, you know, home chores and I'll, I'll never prioritize this over time with the kids, right? So if the kids are in the room, we're not doing this, but um, I, you know, usually I'm doing it late at night. I'm a, I don't sleep a lot. <laughs> I mean, I just, I've never been a person that needs a lot of sleep. So I tend to be up late and I get up early. Yeah. And, um, and so it's those, it's just those quiet moments that I get that I do it. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. And I, I think, you know, I, I kind of do what you what you're doing a little bit, you know. I'll get curious about something. I'll just hear about something on TV, or mm -hmm. hear about a city or a country I didn't really know about. And usually, my first place is like Wikipedia, right? Or mm -hmm. maybe you know some other you know travel site or something like that. Mm -hmm. But you've kind of opened my eyes to kind of apply that curiosity in a more disciplined way that can really help you in your life and, and your career, because, you know, it shows up, it, it shows up with you in so many ways. You'll just be, we'll be having a conversation and mm -hmm. you'll be able to pull out this deep reference about something that Tom Peters wrote or something that yeah. you know, Peter Drucker wrote that is just so useful and so really impressive, quite frankly. So it, it, it must make you, really i'm guessing a more valuable person to be around on the job well you hope so right uh, i just it, honestly it, it's it's so selfish like i get so happy uh, it's joy is would be the word when i see you light up or i hear your voice on on a phone call light up and and at the office it's the same way when you see an idea you know it's like a perfect little seed 
that yeah. in the perfect little garden that sprouts. Yeah. Like, I'm just a junkie for that. And uh, it, that's the most exciting. I, I get most excited when somebody comes and tells me an uh, idea that they had. That is a conversation we had a long time ago, and they've forgotten all that. They're just, they just have this idea left, and it's theirs. And uh, I love it. I just, I just can't get enough of it. So a lot of it is just, it's a way of serving. Is a, a, truly, I, I feel like it's just a way we, we receive to give. Uh, and that's, that's the method to me. It's just a part of who we should be as human beings. Well, that's awesome, Keith. And I sure appreciate uh, your generosity of your, your intellect and your spirit and of your uh, friendship. I mean, it's meant a lot to me. And hopefully through this video, we'll be making some interesting new connections and maybe you've planted some cool new seeds with people today. So what we wanna hear is comments, right? We wanna hear thank people you. talk about this so we can steal some good nuggets. Yeah, let's get the nuggets going. So Keith, <laughs> thank you so much for your, for your uh, time today. Always a pleasure.